I have been waiting for this my whole life. But while chasing our dreams, can it just be so exhausting? Is it ever hard to like wake up in the morning, make it through the day, hard to focus? Is it ever in the back of your mind that being extremely exhausted over a long period of time could actually be something more serious? Not me, I'm the energizer bunny, I run three miles a day. But what if that actually turns into sleeping upwards of 20 hours a day? 11 nonstop infections in a row, multiple ambulance rides. But according to the doctors, there's nothing wrong. So you wait until the fever gets so bad and the chills, they get so unbearable. So this time, you're in another ambulance ride, but you have 105 fever, sepsis, low oxygen, with heart attack, watch blood pressure. And you're in the hospital for weeks until they show you what's in the midsection of your body. You're completely dysfunctional. You can no longer, you barely have energy to think. You can no longer take care of yourself. You can't be a parent. And you definitely can't work. Let's pretend that you had a crystal ball in your hands right now and you look down. And it says there that in the next two years, you're going to be completely dysfunctional for six months to a full year. What would you do? What would your boss do? What if I told you that this is my story and it's covering the last year of my life? What if I told you it's barely scratching the surface? So let's talk about before all this started. When I grew up, my mother, she was a single parent, and we lived in a one-bedroom basement suite in, in an elementary school. And my brother and I, we slept on cots in the living room. When I grew up, I wanted to not have to worry about money and live on the beach somewhere and give my family things that I couldn't have when I was growing up. When I saw this opportunity, I craved that six-figure income, but I was terrible. It took me five weeks of full-time work to write one app. My first 10 people I scheduled on the phone, there was zero home when I showed up. The next 15, they all wanted to think about it. I hated it. <laughs> I remember um, I was on, at the airport coming to my first conference and I almost didn't even get on the airplane. And I told myself, look, this is gonna be a horror story or a success story, but I don't know which one yet. But that first month after, my, uh, after conference was my second month here and I wrote $58,000 of business that month. <laughs> And that was with basically no experience. I was so excited in my life, it was finally looking up until I realized that my marriage was over. 10 years and two children later, gone. I was at an all-time emotional low. I remember in tears going 0 for 15, once again, questioning if I could do this. But all as I could see in my mind was that huge stack of overdue bills on my kitchen countertop. And I now needed to generate $12,000 a month by myself. I called my upline, Ryan Miller and Rob Puckett, and I was worried. And they said, Miranda, I believe in you. Put your head down for two years. And when you look up, you're going to be in a completely different spot. My life became the motto, if I had time to complain, I wasn't busy enough. <laughs> and, <laughs> <laughs> In that very first year, I went from being terrible 
to the number one female in the company with $425,000 of business. <laughs> After that, I remember it was a struggle for me. It was very difficult. remember after that year, it was the hardest time of my life. I, one of the secrets that I tried to hide from everybody during this time was that I was okay. And I knew deep down that I had something going on with myself. I was tired and it was hard for me to make it through the day. And I remember I don't know if I can go through with it. go on to the next screen. I'm sorry. One of the things that I learned is that our lives are always going to move in the direction of our most dominant thoughts. We have 60,000 thoughts a day, but 50% 50,000 of them are the exact same thoughts that we had yesterday. So I want you to ask yourself, are yours about winning or are you stressed out about the possibility of losing? For me, the way that I have to upgrade myself is through the Miracle Morning Routine. And I'm not talking about just read it, guys, but you read it again every three to six months because that's what I've got to do. I need to upgrade those, those thoughts so that they can pull me up instead of continuing to drag me down. The next thing I wanted to bring up is let's talk about goals. And let's talk about where we can find these things on our schedule. One of the things that I learned about parents here at Symmetry is that a lot of times, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> okay. If it's not, what I learned is a lot of times parents are gonna use their family excuses as a reason for them to not get their appointments. But for me, as a single parent, it was the exact reason for me to get my appointments. And I learned that if it's not in our schedule, we can't consider it a real commitment. I remember I called my mom when I was in my second month here, and I said, Mom, I haven't had a day off in two years, or sorry, two months. And she said, Miranda, I remember when I didn't have a day off in three years. So I went to work like her, and I sacrificed to get my appointments every single week. And people, they judged me for getting a babysitter to watch my kids every Friday and Saturday and, sun and most Sundays instead of being at my kids' football games, or for running the field like crazy and missing out on family functions. But for me, I was ready to make some real sacrifices for a few seasons of my children's lives so that I could be present for everything for the rest of their lives. And I remember my upline told me, Miranda, that your life would be different in two years, and for me it was. In the two-year mark, I had built my agency big enough to get out of the field. And I now had the time to be the mom that I always wanted to be. I'm basically an overpaid house mom. 
<laughs> and I actually remember that year, my little one, um, he was struggling in kindergarten. And through our time together, doing the Miracle Morning, we took him from failing to straight A's and the most improved in his class. I have my kids one week on, and the next week you can find me operating my business from my cell phone on a boat, on the beach, or next to a pool. <laughs> I'm finally living my dream, right? <laughs> and I did it all as a single parent following this system. Just shy of my three-year anniversary, I rallied my awesome team and I said, guys, we're ready. We're ready to make a run to that next contract level, the top contract level. And a secret that I tried to hide from everyone, my illness was dropping me to my knees. I had three ambulance rides just that month. John Ziller, he knew I wasn't okay. And with no gain to him, he worked with members of my team to make sure that we still hit our numbers. And we did. Thank you. <laughs> it's been such a long road since then. And quite frankly, I'm still struggling. <sighs> Last week, I didn't even know if I'd make this conference. <laughs> Being in my mid-30s with having a home care nurse, that was never part of my dream. <laughs> the first time that I could take my kids out of the house in six months was just a couple weeks ago. I took them to this awesome resort and they were so happy. And when we checked out of the resort, I checked my bank account. And I knew that I hadn't worked much but I had $58,000 in override deposits just last month. Thank you, Symmetry System. <laughs> the hardest part of my health journey so far was my last hospital stay. They tried to put an IV, uh, an IV needle in my vein, but nothing would come in and nothing would go out. And I was going on three days with no food or water. And I remember thinking, is this it? My life flashed before my eyes. But I knew that in my, because of my last three and a half years of really hard work, nonstop, that if I were to die right this minute, my little ones would have over half a million dollars every year in override deposits in my legacy. I'm gonna leave you with this. I was in such a huge rush to reach the top and do it in the speed of which I did it. But now I can see that the reason that I did it was so much greater than anything that I could have ever imagined. What if the real reason that you're here is so much bigger than anything you could have ever imagined too? <laughs>